This is not a fringe, new agey, crystal rubbing idea. I mean, who recommended this book? Who recommended this book? Oprah. I've heard a lot about it, and I loved The Power of Now, uh, another book by Eckhart Tolle. Even before I read anything in this, I was super excited and that, that Oprah had kind of recommended it. Because really, anybody, anything that he writes has got to be from an awareness that has got to be good for the people. And when I say the people, I mean all people. I think he's, he's on a very short list of, of individuals that I consider to be uh, modern day prophets, mystics, enlightened. I mean, he has had a transformation touched by some sort of divine awareness and tries to share that. And what his book is about is that that kind of awareness is becoming less and less the property of mystics and prophets. It's becoming far more commonplace. I mean, there's probably a reason why there's so many people that come here every week for Hug Nation is because we all are starting to feel this awareness, this kind of craving for a purpose, craving for not so much a purpose, but, but a meaning or a understanding or a peace that is separate from all the voices of the ego world, all of the materialism, all of the traditional faiths, and I think that's where we often get started on this path is we start realizing that the traditional religious systems are so far from what in our hearts we know to be the divine experience. And just so I'm clear about that, when I say the divine experience, I don't mean anything connected with a white-haired individual that's looking over us and touching people that ask for prayers and you know making sure that certain people win Grammys and certain people win football games and other people win wars. I mean, just that connection or that feeling of being a part of something that is a larger system. In the same way that an ant is a part of an ecosystem that involves trees and mud and decay and other animals and other plants and this whole system works in this beautiful cosmic orchestra, we too are a part of a cosmic orchestra and not just on a physical level, on an energetic level. That's kind of how I see it. I think a lot of people are starting to feel that in a sense. And so then as you start to feel the tremblings of, of that, which is what he's saying, more and more and more people are starting to feel that, we, we get less and less patient with our traditional systems, the status quo, whether it be our religious systems or our political systems or our social systems. There is this divine awareness. There is this kind of transcendence beyond ego, losing the ego. Because the ego, the self-identification, the identification with what is best, you know what's best, that your little private mind that you've been cultivating not by yourself, but with your socialization and your parenting and your friends and your social groups and your cliques and your TV, all these media and everything for the last however many years you've been conscious have created this ego mind. And from that place is how we see the world and start making decisions on what's best for us, what's good, what's, what's advantageous. And then we like get really attached to the plans that this little mind that has been distorted for however many years tries to create plans and then we work hard, execute them, and rah! And it's like, can you see the problem with that? It's kind of like you could be running the wrong direction on the football field and have no idea. What if it's somebody on the other team that's like, Ron, no, you're fine, you're fine. You know, yeah, you need, a, you need a bigger TV. You totally need a bigger TV. Okay, okay, I'm going to get it. And then you're like, I got the TV. And they told you it was a victory, so you're like, yeah, I got it. And you're like, yeah. Yeah. And then not too long after that, you're like, okay, it's cool. Where should I go now?